Welcome to the latest edition of Time Out, where we look back at the recent Underage International Series held here in Dublin, featuring the cream of our up-and-coming young stars against opposition from our Celtic neighbours, Wales and Scotland. The event also paid a well-deserved tribute to two giants of the hardwood game, whose recent and timely passing left a huge void, not only in their native lands, but also among their many friends in the Irish basketball scene. Stuart Robbins from Wales and Jim Lay from Scotland were shining beacons of light and terrific role models for aspiring young players eager to learn and master the beautiful game that is basketball. The weekend proved to be a huge success with huge crowds turning out for all games over the weekend. Top National League referees generously gave it their time and expertise and our newly restructured table officials and commissioners committee ensured that the schedule of matches ran on time and with clock-like efficiency. Local club members volunteered for active duty at the three venues, impressed all our international opponents and of course their families with their kind hospitality. Green Day Gym, which is the home of Cubs Basketball Club, and the Oblet uh, Gym, as well as the National Basketball Arena. It turned out to be a fantastic weekend. The 97 born boys development squad were first into action against Wales, but not before some last minute words of wisdom from head coach, Paul Kelleher. So I just make sure, okay, we do all things we work on since November, all right? Make sure we're looking out in transition, we get some easy scores, early doors if we can. Despite some nerves, early doors, the boys settle into the game plan and with some clinical finishing and hard-nosed defence, they recorded the first win of the day for the large, vocal and of course very appreciated home crowd. Next up was the clash of the Wales 96 born girls against Scotland and both coaches were understandably nervous despite relishing the opportunity to begin the campaign with a win on the floor of the Greendale Arena. Hi, I'm uh, Lee Walker, I'm the head coach of the Welsh team and the uh, Higgins team. Um, we're here this weekend for the Stuart Robins uh, Memorial Game. My name is Luis Romero and currently I'm the head coach for the 16 women Scotland national team. Uh, we are here at the Stuart Robins and Jim Lay Memorial Tournament. Uh, that's a restart start for our international programme. We are really, really looking forward to it and it's really a pleasure for us to be here. Scotland overcame their Welsh counterparts after an uncompromising opening half which was not for the faint-hearted and the Tartan army was looking expectantly towards their chances of upsetting the awaiting Irish under-16 squad later in Tala. Undoubtedly one of the highlights for any international player is the thrill of hearing the announcer call out his name and then run on to high-five teammates and acknowledge the home crowd for the very first time before standing to attention and singing the national anthem. Then a quick handshake and exchange of gifts, a last few layups and one final huddle and let the battle commence. The second wave of Irish development players were quickly into their stride and eager to show what they had to offer with next year's Europeans on the horizon. The determined home side were relentless but the Welsh squad battled bravely until the final buzzer sounded and heralded another Irish win. All roads led to Tala in the National Basketball Arena for the main event. The Stuart Robbins and Jim Lay Memorial International, Saturday 28th of April 2012. The home of Irish basketball was filling up nicely with many well-known faces in the dizzy heights of the National League in attendance, dropping by to pay their own private tribute, as well as watching the upcoming Irish stars. Local traders reported a tidal surge in sales as green, white and gold hammers, hats and hands were purchased and brandished with patriotic fervour by the eager fans in attendance. Basketball Ireland's Matt Hall, a close friend of Stuart Robbins, presented special gold medals to both boys' teams in memory of the Welsh legend. Lisa Palambo, Jim Lay's partner, proudly presented the engraved mementos to an emotional Scottish team three of whom were coached at club level uh, by the coach. IAC chairperson Gerard Tarrant presented Lisa with a special pennant to celebrate the event and then the whole arena stood as one to acknowledge the fallen legends with age such significant contributions to basketball in all three countries. The Welsh and Scottish anthems were warmly greeted and appreciated by all supporters and for many people this sums up all that is good in competitive sport between the nations. Philip Rigney's stirring and powerful rendition of Our Own Naveen 
resonated high into the rafter. Tom O'Malley's charges were quickly out of the starting blocks and hard nosed impressive defensive steals coupled with full court layoffs proved too much for the hard working Welsh team who were in training for this summer's FIBA Small Nations Championships in Gibraltar. Of course, bronze medalists at the last competition held in Andorra, they will, hope, they will be hoping to improve on this placing. The game also marked the welcome return of assistant Greg Petrovich and manager PJ Reedy to the Irish backroom star. In the under-16 girls encounter, Eamon Downey faced the baptism of fire when he stepped in at short notice as head coach when Desi O'Sullivan was unable to attend the game but the popular Dublin man seized the opportunity to show his undoubted ability to get the best out of this highly rated Irish side. Trish Mayon, team manager, and Neve Ebbs completed the backroom and technical support as the girls in green returned to winning ways. Afterwards, a very happy Eamon Downey was turning his thoughts to more pressing matters ahead. It's even a bigger night since your wedding up in Tabra Castle. How would this compare? Um, it, it's up there. Um, obviously, I can't say it's bigger than that. Uh, my wife to be wouldn't be too happy with me, but um, it is up there, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud tonight. I really am. I'm proud of the girls. They responded really well. April 29th, and the action moved to the Oblet Hall in Inchicore, a venue steeped in tradition and memories of past glories and triumphs on the international stage with events just like the Roy Curtis tournament. The 1997 Girls' Development Squad was in action for the first time with the all-female coaching and management staff of Bridget Lawler, assistant Claire Sheehy and team manager Maeve Cafola. Taking the cue from their older counterparts, they too played with passion and intensity of the underdog as they took on the 1996-born Welsh team. Their versatility and impressive fitness level was evident when they played against the Scottish under-16 team with just a one-hour break to complete a memorable double victory on their international debut. Like the 1997 Born Boys team, these players will be working hard over the coming year to secure a place in the Irish roster for the FIBA European Championships in 2013. The weekend concluded with the encounter between the 1996 Irish and Welsh teams and the result was never in doubt as Ireland played with great poise and composure to record back-to-back -back wins. Overall, a very impressive performance by the underage Irish squads who can build on this in the coming months as they attempt to continue this upward trend in Irish international sport. Well, that concludes a fantastic day of international action here at the National Basketball Arena in Tallaght. Two wins for Ireland, but I think more importantly, a great debut for a lot of the players and a huge crowd. Delighted and fitting to be joined at the end of the day with IAC Chairperson Gerard Harry. Gerard, congratulations. Fantastic event. Thanks, Shane. Yes, it was a uh, very enjoyable uh, day's basketball. Uh, very good to uh, see such emerging talent on this play again. Absolutely. And the crowd, fantastic crowd. Yeah, I think uh, the occasion for Stuart Robbins and uh, Jim Lee added an extra dimension. Uh, games were played with uh, great passion and intensity and uh, really good to see the place hopping again. Absolutely, and the two Irish teams winning all this out. Yeah, and very surprising as well to see so many uh, past and current players and the uh, coaches back again uh, supporting the national team, which is good to see. Yeah, you mentioned that, we've, we've, I suppose we've interviewed nearly everyone here tonight and they all come from either a Super League or international background. You know, really important that those figures turn up tonight to watch this game. Most of them have come through the, the underage international uh, scene and they graduate on to National League and it's something that we can aspire to and it's something great about Irish basketball. Our 1996 boys team will travel to play Scotland in July for a three game test series. This will be followed by games in Luxembourg against the host nation in Austria before travelling to take on both Belgium and England in Brussels. Video footage of all their upcoming games will be posted on timeout over the summer months. From me, Shane Whelan at Basketball Ireland, we wish all our international teams continued success and we'll return in the next edition with highlights and reaction from the annual awards ceremony and international CAPS presentation on Sunday, May 27th. See you all then.